Hello again everyone and welcome back to Programming in Access 2013. My name is Steve Bishop and today we're going to be continuing our section on VBA or Visual Basic for Applications. More specifically today we're going to talk about methods that you can have in your code which come in the form of functions and subroutines. We've talked about functions and subroutines before but today we're going to get a little bit more in depth into discussing what functions and subroutines can do for us. Because as we've talked about before, functions our code which is grouped together and then return a value back to the user. Now they don't have to return a value, they can return a value, but usually functions, you want to use a function to do some sort of uh, calculation or perform some sort of action and then return back something back to other parts of your code. Okay, And then of course functions group our code together so that it's easier for us to manage and it makes our code reusable so that we can call it repeatedly. Subroutines, as we've talked about before, is also code which is grouped together, but it does not return a value. Subroutines do not return a value, functions can return a value, and that's primarily the biggest difference between functions and subroutines. Subroutines also group our bits of code together so that it's easier for us to manage, and of course makes our code reusable so it can be called repeatedly, and also, subroutines are the basically the default of what Access creates in the background to handle any of our events when we click on a button or select a, a combo box drop down or update a value in a text box, things like that. So uh, when we when we want to create some sort of event handler, then that event handler is going to it's going to be by default created as a subroutine in Access. All right, so let's go ahead and hop out into our database here. And we've got a form which has txt value 1, txt value 2, and then we've got four different mathematical operation buttons on here. We got addition, subtraction, multiplication, and divide. And if we look behind the code for our divide button, you'll see it looks very very similar to the code that we've written that we've written before that we wrote before, okay? And that is we're going to take the two values and we're going to divide them and then we're going to display the message to the message to the user in the form of a message box. If there's any sort of error, we're going to jump down here to this error handler, uh, which is going to take the error number and based upon the error number is going to either display divide, cannot divide by zero, both values must be numeric, or if neither of these two are the error numbers, then by default we have this case else which will, if, if it's neither of these two numbers, then it's just going to say, could not perform the function, please try again. All right, and let's just see that in action. Let's see what happens when we use the divide. We'll do 4 divided by 2. Of course, that's 2. 4 divided by 0. Cannot divide by 0. 4 divided by Steve. Both values must be numeric. And if I just leave this blank, then we get could not perform function, please try again. Okay? Now that's great, and what, a, what are we going to do about these other three buttons? Because what we can do normally, you might think, well, let's just go into back here, and we'll just basically copy and paste all that code and put it in here, and we will m maneuver it a little bit. We'll kind of change it up a little bit. We need to change the operator here to a plus sign instead of the divide that we had down below. And we also don't have any chance of this cannot divide by zero, so let's just go ahead and drop it out of our select case error handler. But other than that, this function here, this, this subroutine, is identical. This code block is pretty much identical to what we've done here in the division. And then, of course, I've gone in and I've said, okay, here's my multiplication with the multiplication sign, and here's my subtraction with the subtraction sign. But... I've got a lot of duplicate code here. I've got a lot of things that are happening repeatedly over and over again. Wouldn't it be nice if we could just put this all together into one and then call that one f that one subroutine and have it perform the operation? Okay? So let's let's see what that would look like. I'm going to take my division here. I'm going to go ahead and copy this. And I'm going to create a new sub, uh, a new subroutine. We do that by using either the, we're going to start with a private keyword, private sub, and I'm just going to call this sub math. And then I'm just going to paste the code that we want to perform inside of the math subroutine. 
Now I can take all this code here and I can replace it with just the word math. Okay, I'll go ahead and indent this a little bit, make it a little nicer. Replace that with math. And replace this with math. And lastly, we'll handle the add. Okay, so now, rather than having this code be redundantly typed out, we just simply have one single call in each one of these button click handlers to go and point to the math subroutine that we created down here, which has the one bit of code that we need to run. So let's just kind of, I'm going to go ahead and set a breakpoint on the divide so that we can step through this here. 4 divided by 2. It's going to drop into the same subroutine that we created before, but now when I step through the code, you'll see when it hits this math, this call for the math subroutine, it's going to go ahead and drop down here to the private sub math that we created, and it's going to do our operation for us display to the user we didn't have an error so it's not going to go through the error handling and it's going to jump back up to the end of our subroutine where you know it's going to continue on back up here after the math call that we did which just puts us at the end of our subroutine the btn div underscore click subroutine so it's going to put us at the end of that and that's the end of our code so it's done executing all right so that's great but now we have one little thing that we need to start worrying about because 4 plus 2 is not 2. 4, I guess that is 2, but you can see we're still doing a division for each one of those buttons. So what we need to do is we need to be able to tell our little subroutine here some way to change this operator. Okay, We need to give some way of saying, I want this operator to be something else. Okay, the way we can do that is I'm going to outside of these subroutines, I'm going to dim a variable called operator. Okay, oh, and I need to say as, let's just for the sake of making it simpler to understand, we're going we're gonna to label it a string. And now what we can do is before we make our math call, we're going to set this variable to something that we can then use later on down here to determine which one of these operators we want to do. And we'll see how that works here. I'm going to show you. Operator equals, let's do pl uh, plus for add. Do operator equals divide. I'm just going to go ahead and copy this here. This is going to be multiply. And this is going to be subtract. Now, since this is being stored as a string, I can't just go in here and say operator, OK? Uh, because this would just be a string. And you'll see we get an expected end of statement. There's something wrong here, because operator is a string. And it recognizes that this is a variable. This is not an actual arithmetic operator to be doing. So what we need to do here is we need to build another select case statement and we use operator as our first variable to uh, to do this select case against. So I'm going to also end our select. It's always a good idea that when you start a code block you also put the ending tag at the end too. So we'll do case is equal to plus sign and then we'll do we'll just copy and paste this here for our different operations so plus minus multiply and divide oops divide there we go okay so now what's going to happen is we're going to do a select case on that operator variable and notice that we're setting it up here on our button click events to set the operator variable to basically tell the select case which of the operators uh, is being selected. So let's now we can take this message box here. I'll go ahead and cut this, paste it into the divide. 
change this to multiply, change this one to subtract, and change our addition to addition. Now, that is going to now flow through our case select here, our select case op and operator, and based upon what we've set up above here in our operator variable, it's going to now come down to this select case and figure out which which one of these operations needs to happen. And then if we run into any errors during any of this, we should jump down to our problem uh, code block here, and we should be able to pick out which error is happening. All right, so this looks like it's going to work. Let's go ahead and run our application. 2 divided by 2, that's good. 2 multiplied by 4 is 8, that's great. 4 minus 2 is 2, that's great. And addition is 42. All right, I tripped you all up here. You guys all thought this was going to be perfect, right? How, why do we get 42 here, you may be wondering. Well, that's because access has actually concatenated the 4 and the 2 together with the addition sign. And if I go back into my code here, and this is going to trip you guys up, you need to make sure that if value 1 is a string and value 2 is a string, then VBA turns the addition sign into a concatenation sign. Okay, so you need to be aware of this. The way you have to handle this is you have to make sure that value 1 and value 2 are numbers. They must be numeric. And the way you can do that is you can use a simple little function here. Uh, I'm going to change these. I'm going to convert these values into doubles. Okay. I'm going to make sure that no matter what somebody types up in those text boxes, we are converting it into a double. Okay, so it'd be the same thing as if I was saying, you know, uh, dim uh, value one as double, and then I was taking value one and setting it to me.txt value one. Okay, so this is just kind of a shorter way of basically doing that and returning it as a double value. So we don't need to have this dim and setting the values like that. Okay, so now we're implicitly, we're saying you need to convert this text box, this string, into a double. Okay, now when we do our math, 2 plus 4 is 6 and we're good to go. All right, so that is how we can use a subroutine to our advantage. But what about functions? Is there something we can do here that might be more useful with a function? And there is, okay? What we can do is, remember, a, a function is going to return a value. So what I can do is I can actually make a function, private function calculation. I'm going to call it calculation. And then we're going to return it as a double. And what we're doing here is we're going to say, essentially this calculation is going to have a variable called calculation defined as a double automatically for us in our function code. Okay, so when we create a private function called calculation here and then we say as double what's going to happen is we get this defined variable automatically by access which is going to be called whatever the function name is and of the type of whatever we say in the as double so I don't need to type in the dim calculation as double I can leave that out now what we can do is we can take all of this and we can actually do something really kind of cool I'm going to take all of this code, cut it out of our subroutine, paste it in here, and instead of saying message box and have each one of these things return back, I'm going to take this and I'm going to say message 
box. And calculation. And that's all we have to have in our subroutine. And now what I can do is I can change this message box. Instead of displaying the message box to our user, I'm going to actually just define that calculation variable in each one of these statements. So now what's happening here is that our math subroutine is going to call calculation within our func uh, within our application here. It's going to call the calculation function, which is going to come down here. And now what's going to happen is it's going to go through our operator check to find out which one of these uh, operations needs to be performed. And then it's going to assign the value returned from this operation into our calculation variable that is automatically created in VBA and is assigned to this calculation function. So now what's going to happen is it's going to, I'm going to go ahead and set a breakpoint on the division here. And we'll just step through this and you'll see how this works. 4 divided by 2, okay? Going to change our operator to division. Then it's going to make the call to our math subroutine. Our math subroutine is just another call which is going to display a message box of the value returned from our calculation function. So when we do that, oh, I have to change this from exit sub. I apologize, I made a goof here. I need to change this to function because remember, this is no longer a subroutine, it is a function, so we need to exit our function. So it caught me on that. All right, now we're good to go. Now we've come across our case is a division. So we set the variable calculation to me.txt value one divided by me.txt value two. End our select, exits the function, and now we return back a value of two. Because what happened is this is going to return back to the message box whatever the value, whatever the variable that was returned back called calculation, it's returned back and message box displays the value returned by our calculation. Isn't that pretty cool? So that's how you can use subroutines to group your functions together and make them slimmer. Uh, so functions do essentially the same thing as subroutines, but now we can return a specific value back and the value that's going to be returned we can is, is already created as a variable in the function and so we can just assign that variable whatever the value is that we want to return back and that's how that works. All right, I hope you guys have found this enjoyable and, and, and you guys can fully understand this. Please feel free to send me any messages uh, with requests for other videos you'd like to see or if you have any questions about videos that I've already done.